Welcome back to Movie Rewind. Today I will recap for you a thriller, action, crime film from 2000 titled Gone in 60 Seconds. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. Los Angeles, California. Kip Rains is a high-end car thief in search of a specific vehicle. He follows his intel to the given address, which he learns is not a residence, but a new car dealership. Still undeterred, Kip takes a brick from his trunk and smashes the dealership glass before taking off in a silver 911 Carrera. Now full of adrenaline, Kip pulls up to a stoplight and challenges the neighboring driver, and they take off racing through the streets of LA, flying past police cars in the process. Kip makes it back to the warehouse, but a helicopter had followed the car back to their location, and now a caravan of police cruisers prepares to close in. Luckily, the spotlight provides enough warning for Kip and his collaborators to grab what they can, and run out in time to narrowly avoid arrest. Soon after, Detective Castlebeck arrives on scene, and reviews the evidence with Detective Drykoff. The warehouse contains over a dozen luxury vehicles, none of which show any damage to locking mechanisms, steering columns, or ignitions, confirming they were stolen by professionals. Drykoff points out one Mercedes, deemed unstealable by the manufacturer, as it requires a laser-cut key. Castlebeck orders the vehicles to be impounded for one month. He also steps on some purple shards of glass, which are collected as evidence. Nearby, in Southern California, Memphis reigns. A notorious Los Angeles car thief who called it quits, now teaches go-kart racing to kids. He is visited there by an old friend, Atlee, who has come to tell him that Kip is in trouble. Although Memphis left his life of crime years ago, Kip grew up and followed in his brother's footsteps, agreeing to boost 50 select vehicles for a dangerous British gangster, Raymond. Following the police raid on Kip's warehouse, Raymond has kidnapped Kip and is threatening his life. Hearing this, Memphis returns to LA with Atlee, and they go to the salvage yard to see Raymond. Upon arriving, Memphis places $10,000 cash on the table, returning the deposit that was given to Kip. It is no longer a matter of money however, Raymond needs the 50 vehicles on his list, delivered to the Long Beach Pier four days from now, otherwise his South African buyer goes elsewhere next time. To show that he's serious, Raymond reveals a freshly crafted hardwood casket, which Memphis is relieved to see still empty. Memphis then finds Kip handcuffed to a steering wheel. Kip is surprised to see him there, having not seen Memphis in years. Raymond begins crushing the car and Memphis draws a gun on him, resulting in a standoff with Raymond's men. After quickly considering his options, Memphis lowers his gun, thereby assuming the contract to deliver 50 cars by Friday, and the crushing machine is shut off. Memphis spends the night at Kip's house, and wakes up to Kip cooking breakfast, as they reminisce over an old racing trophy. Breakfast consists of bacon and potatoes with beer, and a side of burnt toast, which nearly makes Memphis choke. Instead, he surprises their mother at the diner she works at. There, Memphis explains that Kip is in deep trouble, which barely surprises his mother. He can get Kip out, but it means doing things he promised he would never do again. She tells Memphis to do whatever it takes. Outside, Memphis is approached by Detective Castlebeck, after being spotted by two cops in the diner. He finds it ironic that Memphis shows up the day after finding 13 stolen vehicles, but Memphis says he's visiting for a family emergency, and will be leaving in a few days. Short on time, Memphis goes to see an old associate, Otto. The space they previously used as a chop shop for stolen vehicles, has now become a legitimate restoration garage. Aware of Kip's situation, Otto wonders if Memphis is planning a comeback, and asks for the details. Upon hearing the specifics, Otto says it can't be done, and Memphis prepares to leave, but Otto quickly reconsiders. He says that he's in, though they're still going to need more people, so they begin making calls. Their first call is to Donnie, another former member of Memphis's crew who now works as a driving instructor for adult drivers. He couldn't be happier to hear from Memphis, and quickly gets on board. The next few calls, however, are not as fruitful, leaving just two names remaining. The first call is to Sphinx, who is now a coroner. He also does not speak, so Memphis has him press buttons in order to respond. And finally Sway, Memphis's ex-girlfriend, who is not as happy to hear from him and turns down the offer. Memphis leaves, and outside the bar he's approached by Johnny B, a gang member upset that Raymond's order didn't go to him. He tells Memphis to get out of town, tonight, then jumps in with his gang. Johnny B hears the sound of glass breaking behind. Sphinx uses a towel to light Johnny B's gas tank, sending the car up in flames, then dispatches of Johnny and his men, 
before reuniting with Memphis. The next day, Kip and his crew show up at the warehouse to assist, but Memphis strongly opposes their involvement. Despite the objections, Otto says they can't do it without them, so Memphis asks what Kip's guys can do. Mirror is an electronics expert, who can provide the latest and greatest gadgets. Toby is a computer expert, who can hack into the DMV database, get names and addresses, and change VIN numbers. Tumblr is a professional driver. And Fred Fred can order pizzas for everyone. Memphis agrees to let Kip and his crew in, but maintains that he is the one in charge, which Kip agrees to. Everyone gathers around the blackboard, and they begin reviewing the list. The plan is for a one-night boost. With such a large order, by the time the first car is reported stolen, all 50 will have already been shipped out. The new Mercedes also require laser-cut keys, which Tumblr says he has covered. Toby hacks into the insurance database to obtain addresses for the vehicles on the list, Donnie goes to the DMV for any cars Toby can't locate, and Memphis poses as a rich collector and scouts the Ferrari dealership. Atley then takes them to the dock to review shipping procedures, when Sway shows up. Eager to avoid any questions, Sway says she came for Kip and walks off. Meanwhile, Detective Drykoff investigates the impounded Mercedes vehicles and discovers they were all purchased from the same dealership, Dresner Foreign Motors. The only ex-con working there, James, also happens to be the person who handles replacement keys, so Drykoff and Castlebeck visit the dealership, and under threat of grand theft auto charges, James agrees to contact them if his contact returns for more keys. That night, Memphis and Kip are driving home when their car is cut off. It is an ambush by Johnny B, who sprays the vehicle along with his men, while Kip and Memphis take off on foot. Johnny B chases them to a nearby diner. He has to stop there due to the cop cars outside, but he waits in his vehicle while Memphis contemplates what to do. Kip sneaks out of the diner and attaches a steel cable to a semi-truck, and the other end to Johnny B's car, while Memphis distracts the truck driver inside. The semi-truck pulls away, taking Johnny B's rear axle with it, and alerting the nearby police officers. Fred, eager to prove himself, steals a 1983 Cadillac after finding the car with its keys inside. The car turns out to belong to a drug dealer, with packages of heroin inside the trunk. Before they can get rid of it, Detective Castlebeck stops by the garage. Everyone scrambles to clear any evidence. Castlebeck looks around the shop, nearly steps in drugs, then calls dispatch to check on the Cadillac. Luckily, the Cadillac has not yet been reported stolen, so Castlebeck leaves, but the team now knows the police are hot on their trail. Tumblr goes to Dresner to pick up another batch of Mercedes keys, and James notifies Castlebeck, who sets up at each of the car owner's addresses. The night of the boost, Mirror gives Donnie a new set of fingerprints, and Memphis breaks out his old tools. They set off and get to work, meeting little resistance in the early stages. The team works quickly and efficiently, as Kip's anxiety begins increasing. As each car comes in, Otto crosses it off their list. The next round of cars goes just as smoothly, and the board continues filling up. Castlebeck, who is staking out one of the Mercedes, sees Memphis arrive with a key, but Memphis notices the van has been moved from the previous day, causing him to abort that target. Knowing now that the Mercedes are monitored, Donnie is called off as well, and everyone's sent back to the garage. The police try and tail Memphis, but Sway loses them by pulling into nearby driveway. Back at the garage, Memphis questions Tumblr about the Mercedes keys, as they are all being monitored by police. Otto discovers they still have the last batch of keys, but those vehicles are at the police impound lot. Without the three Mercedes there is no point in boosting another car, as Raymond will maintain 47 is not 50, so they are forced to go after the impounded cars. At the same time, Castlebeck presses another informant for information. Fearful of a parole violation, the informant reveals it was Raymond Kalitri's order that Memphis is working on. Castlebeck pulls Raymond's file, but their captain takes it from them. Raymond is already under surveillance on a homicide charge, therefore he says it's pointless to go after him for Grand Theft Auto. Memphis and Sway prepare to boost a Lamborghini, but get interrupted when the owner returns home. They return to their car to wait. Memphis and Sway revisit their past relationship, Memphis saying that he did ask her to join before leaving town, but Sway couldn't walk away from stealing cars, it was only after Memphis left that she was able to quit because it wasn't the same without him. The Lamborghini owner starts getting intimate with his partner, deepening the tension in the car, until Sway eventually joins Memphis on the driver's side. The other couple retires to the bedroom and Sway quickly goes back to work on the Lamborghini. Six hours remaining, at the police impound lot. Mirror distracts the officer on duty, 
while Memphis and the others cut the fence. Still distracted by Mirror, the officer never sees the three cars drive away. Castlebeck receives a note from the forensics lab, the glass shards he picked up at Kip's warehouse came from a common blacklight bulb. Castlebeck returns to the warehouse, and searches the wall with a handheld blacklight. He finds the list of all 50 vehicles, which they can't completely cover due to manpower issues, so Castlebeck scans for the most scarce vehicles on the list. He settles on the 1967 Mustang GT, nicknamed Eleanor, that has always eluded Memphis any time he went after it. Three hours remaining, Kip and Tumblr arrive at a vehicle and discover that Toby had unexpectedly joined. They find the owners in the backyard distracted, and jump in the Escalade, but Toby lingers and gets spotted. The homeowner calls security, who spots the Escalade and begins pursuing. Another officer sets up a roadblock, and fires at the truck when Tumblr tries to evade. Kip looks back to find Toby has been shot. Since the car is stolen, they return to the warehouse first, and switch cars before driving to a hospital. Kip goes with Toby, and Atlee promises if something goes wrong, he will get Kip out of town. One hour to the deadline, only Eleanor remains. Castlebeck gets the address and heads towards Long Beach. Memphis arrives at the car and quickly picks the lock, before pausing for a quick conversation with Eleanor. He says their history has not been great, but he needs her to take care of him this one time, before starting up the ignition. Castlebeck arrives just as Memphis pulls out of the garage, and the chase begins. Sway blocks the police vehicle, giving Memphis a head start, and he takes off through downtown as backup vehicles join in the pursuit. Memphis pulls off the road and enters the city flood control thoroughfare, and a helicopter adds onto the chase. Seeing this, Memphis hits the nitrous button, propelling the Mustang to speeds even the chopper can't maintain. At the hospital, Atlee checks the time and suggests getting Kip out of town. Kip says he's not going to run from his problems, the way his brother did, which upsets Atlee. He explains that their mother had asked Memphis to leave town, hoping to avoid Kip following his brother's example. Despite that, Kip ended up a car thief still, rendering Memphis's sacrifice for naught. 25 minutes to deadline, a police cruiser spots Eleanor and restores the pursuit. Castlebeck joins in and Memphis leads them through the shipyard, leaving all kinds of damage in his wake. A wrecking ball sends a police vehicle through a wall, which allows Memphis to reach the highway. The chopper cannot enter the airport fly space, so it gives up the pursuit as well. Memphis makes it to the bridge, but it is completely blocked by an accident, which also allows Castlebeck to catch up. With no other options, Memphis guns the engine and uses a flatbed as a ramp, soaring over the accident and leaving the police behind. 8 AM hits, and Raymond is one car short of 50. He calls Atlee asking for Kip, but Atlee lies and says Kip skipped town on him, so Raymond says Memphis will take the fall instead. Memphis arrives 12 minutes later. Eleanor is a little banged up, but still running. After some conversation, Raymond punches Memphis with a pair of brass knuckles and orders his men to kill Memphis. Before they can do so, Atlee arrives and distracts them while Kip knocks them over with a claw. Memphis finds Raymond and knocks him out of his chair, then beats him up until Raymond flees and retrieves his gun. Castlebeck ignores his orders to stand down, and shows up at Raymond's salvage yard in time to hear the gunshots from inside. Castlebeck knocks over a metal bar, drawing Raymond's attention, and Raymond then targets him, and holds him at gunpoint. Castlebeck identifies himself as a cop, but Raymond doesn't care. He is prepared to kill Castlebeck but Memphis intervenes. He knocks Raymond over the ledge, killing him, and saves Castlebeck in the process, who looks down and retrieves the gun. Castlebeck, now finding himself in a moral dilemma, tells Memphis to leave before he changes his mind. Before doing so, Memphis advises him to check container 14, which contains the 49 stolen vehicles. Soon after, the group reconvenes for a barbecue. Sphinx speaks for the first time, shocking everyone while revealing he has a British accent. Kip gifts Memphis a set of keys, which Otto reveals belong to a 1967 Mustang GT, that he says will look like Eleanor in no time. Memphis hugs his brother, then tells Atlee that he knows what he did, before driving away with Sway. Okay guys, thank you for watching. Please leave a like on the video, and subscribe to the channel to see more.